Welcome to the Summer's Woodworking Show. It's Season 5, Episode 4. Tonight we're going to talk about materials, like who is your supplier and where do you get them. Uh, first off, we're going to start with uh, Charles, and uh, then we'll go to Chris, then we'll go to Jerry, and then we'll go to Mike. Howdy, I am Charles Daring. By the way, uh, Brian, your logo is right over your face. Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Charles Daring. Uh, you can find me at woodenvisions.com, and in the link section, there should have the links to all my social media. If not, my YouTube is Charles Daring Scroll is the username, but you should be able to find me. I'm, I think my logo <laughs> is this right here, as a matter of fact. It's, all right. Thank you, sir. I'm also very active on Facebook. All right. Sounds good. How about you, Chris? Hey, guys. Chris here from the old Cranky Workshop. Not in the shop today because we have a monsoon coming in, and with the rain, you couldn't hear me out, out there. So, um, But you'll find me on Facebook and on YouTube, and some videos are in final edit right now. So hopefully you'll have something out soon. All right, sounds good. Next, Jerry. And for some reason, you're black on my end. That's not good. Is the camera not working again? Well, you were fine until I clicked on you. I don't know. I got you, Jerry. Else you? Yep. Okay, well, maybe it's just me. <laughs> Jerry with Polly Wants a Crafter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. All that good stuff. All righty. You got a website, don't you, Jerry? Yes, Polly wants a crafter dot com. Uh, also have a t shirt thread shop, but I have no idea how to get there. So one of these right. days I'll post it. <laughs> okay, next we got Mike. Hey everyone, Mike Mertzke, Mertzke Custom Woodworking. Uh, you can find the links to all of my social medias over at MertzkeCustomWoodworking.com. All right, well, we're going to start off by saying materials. Uh, I do turning. I do uh, CNC work. I do a lot of, you know, flat work. Building materials and whatnot and uh, a lot of the stuff that I get here locally I get it through Home Depot or Lowe's but if I want to get like hardwoods and whatnot I usually go through Rockler which is probably expensive <laughs> because I don't know where a local sawyer is and uh, that's how I get my stuff where do you guys get your stuff at and uh, what kind of stuff is it? I'll start with you, Mike. Um, I've got a couple kind of go-to spots. Um, I do have a local guy, a uh, buddy of mine, actually has a sawmill. And um, he he normally only has uh, like quarter sawn white oak. Sometimes he'll have some walnut, uh, red oak, and poplar. Um, basically, he... He's got to deal with a bunch of the tree removal services here locally, so they will just drop off the logs. So he mills them up um, and then air dries them, and then when they're dry enough, you know, kind of, um, then he'll sell them. And and because his uh, his material investment is well free, he sells it at a really good price. So uh, Does he for that kind of I'm sorry, what? Does he sell online? No, uh, no, just kind of local. He does it as a hobby. Um, at one point, he thought about making like a full-time business of it, but decided that he'd rather just kind of do it. So on the weekends, he's out there milling lumber and stuff like that. So if I need something that he can't, uh, he doesn't have, uh, like any of the exotics or anything like that, I have to drive a about a two and a half hour drive up to Mayoden, North Carolina to uh, it's called Steve wall lumber and they've got really good prices, really good quality hardwood. Um, 
and that's really the closest place I've found. There's a, there's some places closer to me, but uh, the quality or the prices just aren't aren't what Steve Wall provides. Okay. So do you do any pin turning? I do do some. Where do you um, get your supplies at? Usually just from scrap woods from the shop. Scrap woods from the shop. Yeah. You're not no fancy dancy. Go get some alumalite or acrylic. I would love to eventually at some point get into that. I, I see some of the stuff these other guys are doing with that. And at, at some point I would. Um, I'm just not there yet. Okay. How about you, Jerry? Well, I'm uh, I'm weird because I will go to Home Depot for the most part, but anytime I've got an order for something like poplar or more than just a couple of feet of oak, I go to a hardwood store that's about 45 minutes from here, and uh, they close at three o'clock. And they're only open Monday through Friday, so it's a pain because I usually have to skip out on work to run over there. I did try to drive all the way down to Austin, and it was a disaster. But I'll go to Woodcraft, order from Rockler online. Uh, I have a Western Pin Hardwoods or something like that. I'm not too sure, but uh, some of the smaller exotics, I can get through them. That way I don't have to fight with going to stores. Uh, I did get a nice piece of canary wood from Woodcraft that was on sale just the other day, so that was nice. But, uh, you know, pen supplies, I'll get them all over the country. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, Amazon's my friend for a lot of stuff, but wood is usually the, the one or two places around town, unfortunately. There is a new um, place where I got some MDF and they coat MDF there, but I'm not going to use a lot of it because I don't really like it. Uh, it's nothing wrong with the MDF. I just have a hard time painting it. And that guy there has his own sawmill and he's pretty close to us. So I might hit him up too. I can't see you, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> talking about wood. Okay. Well, no, I mean, you said this guy here. What What guy? Well, uh, the guy that works at the MDF place. Oh, okay. I got mosquitoes in the shop. Yeah, eBay is another place that I found to buy hardwood. You know, the only hardwood dealer around here is li liquid lo lumber li liquidators or whatever it's called. Hardwood flooring. Yeah. I want something, you know, that I can get nice big board out of. Not these uh, floor slats. <laughs> yeah, lumber liquidators. That's all we have here. But at least we got a Home Depot. Uh, I didn't have that in New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, that's How about you, Chris? No, can't hear you. There we go. There we go. The mute button wasn't working for some reason. Okay. Um, I don't know. I Home Depot, Lowe's, those are my usual go-to if I want new, clean wood. Um, but I'm a scrounger, too. I will salvage a piece of wood if I see it on the side of the road. I will pull over and throw it in the back of the truck. Um, you know, if it's crap, it winds up in the fire pit. If, after I run into the planer, if it's usable, hey, it's bonus. Um, even just recently, we renovated the bathroom, and I pulled all the old wall boards off, and there was some oak mix in there. And um, when I took the old medicine cabinet down, discovered it was built out of walnut. So, oh, wow. you know, I ran out to the planer, cleaned it up, and now it's stacked up on the back shelf. Make a little turning projects out of it. I mean, it's not a ton supply, but it's, it's pieces I didn't have three weeks ago. So, uh, so it drives my wife a little nuts that I will pull over on a road trip and grab a pile of lumber that someone's abandoned. Or uh, I'm not opposed to dumpster diving when I see pieces of wood sticking out. I will climb up on the edge and take a look inside. 
she did stop me on the way to a wedding once when I was in my good suit and uh, I was ready to climb into a dumpster. We had 20 minutes to kill. So um, <laughs> she, put, she put the kibosh on that one, though. So, <laughs> I don't see an issue with it. <laughs> I don't either, but, you know, whatever makes her happy, I will do it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'm a big believer in scrounger and reusing and salvaging. I just made contact with a furniture company in Watertown, Mass, who builds these beautiful farm tables out of all salvaged timbers. And I just happened to ask the guy, we were sitting at the bar one night, and I met him, what do you do with your cutoffs? And he said, well, most of them wind up in the, the fire barrel out back. I'm like, please, no. <laughs> Let yeah. me come and pick through your, your, your cutoffs pile first. So so he's got to touch base with me. He's got to clear with his boss first. But they burn most of it. So um, so if I can go over there and I can get a couple of board feet every now and then, hey, it's a bonus. So again, salvage, scrounging, keep your eye on the, out on the sides of the roads. Uh, keep your head on a swivel, as they say. Uh, you never know what you're going to see that you walked right past. So, okay. Charles. I guess the guy with the good-looking hat is he still there, Charles? Is he frozen? No, I'm not frozen, but I am oh, seeing okay. that I'm. <laughs> still, I'm uh, there's a couple things from the YouTube chat. Uh, David Gunn's trying to get in, but can't get in through Yahoo Messenger, so he needs an invite from the actual Hangout. Uh, and I noticed I'm hidden behind the subscribe logo. I happens every time on Russia's show. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? Y'all are just going to take, a, take my word for it that I'm here, but I have to duck below the subscribe button. Uh, anyway, uh, most of what I do is scroll sawing, but... Uh, Believe it or not, my my go-to supplier is on eBay. A guy named Deer. His name is Kim Oberlin, but uh, his eBay name is Deer Fifty Six Hunter. We went over him last night on my show. He has all kinds of eighth inch, sixteenth inch, and just all kinds of wood. I mean, you just almost any kind you can imagine. But and I. I, I've never tried to get custom wood from him, but you probably could, or he could try to uh, get you in touch with somebody that can fill that order. Uh, but uh, he's a mom and pop thing, uh, to my knowledge. But as far as where other people can go for for scroll saw usable wood, would be Sloan's Wood Shop and Okooch Hardwoods, as well as Heritage Woods and Bear Beartooth Woods. Those are the ones I hear most often, but my go-to source has been eBay, but uh, that's for specialty wood, but uh, I had a, an acquaintance of mine had a stroke, so his wife gave me all the sheet, sheet good he had, so I still have that. When that runs out, I'll probably have to start going through all these actual stores. <laughs> now, Brian, get rid of that subscribe button so people can see my ugly face. <laughs> You know, Charles, I was just going to the chat, and Katie Dotson had a good idea. Just change your name to subscribe. <laughs> well, uh, according to Russ Clarity, uh, the, the panel goes alphabetically, and uh, yep. my, my last name, no, it must be go by first names. Yeah. I don't know how it goes. Yeah, I don't well, know how it goes, but I always... So you're up top, so it don't matter. But, uh, yeah, yeah goes, it's no yeah, ending. It's, At least people can hear me. <laughs> it's alphabetical because the night Charles wasn't there, I was behind it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here anyway, so whatever works. TJ's Woodworking yeah. Shop is in the outside chat. Katie Dotson, uh, some of the people on the panel, Inspired Woodworks, Bob Lee's Wood Shop. We have David where Gunn. Where do these to... people get all their materials? Yeah, folks, where do y'all get your materials? Uh, David Gunn's trying to get in here, but he said he can't do it through Yahoo Messenger. I already told you that, didn't I? Uh, yeah, y'all, where do y'all get your materials? I'm trying to get them in. No, no answers yet. Let's so, and It's a few seconds behind us. Uh, for the sake of of what's going on in the outside chat inspired woodworks i can never remember his name i'm so sorry he says hey charles i scored a very vintage craftsman pen scroll saw for 10 and ten dollars 
it actually works better than my other two. I'm surprised. Well, good luck with that. Uh, Jim Brashear, my wife wants to know if you have to have a ball cap to be on the show. <laughs> Only if you got thinning hair. Uh, <laughs> hey, I don't. My hair is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See, Mike's nice, too. <laughs> Jerry Brown said the same thing in the outside chat. No, it's a thinning hair club. Uh, John Schaffner says... Craigslist is a good source. Good to see you, John. Yeah, Craigslist. Uh, here in Ohio, my backyard says Bobby Bob blah, Bob Lee's Wood Shop. I'm doing pretty good, TJ. Better than I was earlier. Bob Lee's Wood Shop and work. I guess he gets it at work as well. And Katie Dawson says she has two lumber mills about 30 miles from her. I haven't been to one. She hasn't been to one of them yet. I would love to live next door to a cabinet shop. I'd live in their dumpster. Yeah. But that says a lot about me anyway. Inspired Woodwork says I get a lot of mine from either a job I work at or a buddy that's ground this for me. Go ahead, Brian. I need to find a sawmill that's willing to ship. I'm sure there are some. And it's yeah. going to be cheaper than Rockler's because Rockler's, I, I spent like 40 bucks just for a bowl blank. There, Have there, you, um, you know, one thing you can do is if you go over to um, Woodmiser's website, um, Woodmiser owners can actually register on their website for local sawmills, and you can look it up. So some of these guys are just you know kind of mom and pop or you know businesses. They've got a Woodmiser and they're milling up lumber. So I would recommend checking that out. You might actually find. Um, you know something local to you just somebody you know doing urban milling or again just kind of doing it out of their backyard and yeah. brian you, sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you can also find mold blanks on ebay that's where i found some of the guy his business name is ozark something or something ozark yeah but it's been a while but he has some gorgeous blanks i've been bouncing between rockler and ebay yeah the you know the kind of the thing with with source and lumber other than like if you've got places where you can find like either reclaim sources or you know find in cabinet shops or or other places like that that you can get their cutoffs the closer you get to the tree the cheaper your cost is going to be um yeah. you know and that's the problem is the places like woodcraft and rockler and even home depot lowe's all those places you're paying for so many steps, not only in the milling of the lumber, but the shipping and the guy stocking the shelves and everything else, that there's such a an add-on cost. I was literally disgusted when I found out how cheap you could actually get lumber if you bought rough cut lumber. Yeah. Like it made me sick to my stomach how much I had been paying for price, years. The price of lumber is just outrageous. Just like they know that you're coming and they're going to give it to you, all right? Yeah, it's that supply and demand thing. Steve French is saying as almost all the wood I see on eBay is way overpriced. And uh, yeah, I guess it's because I'm looking for thin wood that I'm able to find it pretty affordable. But uh, maybe he's looking for bigger pieces and thicker. Uh, oh, yeah. You bigger pieces, they're like outrageous. Well, I think that's true to pretty much anywhere where you source. You just kind of got to keep your eye out. There is three lumber sources closer than Steve Wall Lumber to me, where I'd only have to drive an hour to get there instead of two and a half hours. Yeah, Jerry. Sorry. The quality and the added price that they charge, it makes it worth my while to drive. So that's a total of five hours of driving. So that's a day. I have to take an entire day to go get lumber. That's why I have a huge contractor rack on the back of my truck. Because when I go get lumber, I'm probably dropping anywhere from five to seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, Jerry Brown in the outside chat is saying a problem with eBay is shipping, but that's probably because Jerry probably buys in huge bulk. <laughs> but I, I've been to Jerry's shop one time, and he had some gorgeous wood specimens there. It just, I was very envious. And he he has, I don't know if he still has them, but he had little compartments with different kinds of woods and acrylics and. All kinds of stuff. Back when I did pens, I bought from Penn State Industries and other places that sold pen blanks. But uh, I slowed down doing pens. So yeah, know. man. You know, I'm going to tell on myself a little bit, but 
<laughs> so, uh, I, I never dealt with hardwood before. It's always been pine or, you know, oak or poplar, but these exotics and, you know, maple, like curly maple, man. The first time I ever seen it was when Jerry sent me some uh, curly maple, five by five squares, and I made some pen blanks out of those. And man, that wood is so beautiful. Yeah. I could just imagine having a great big old tabletop made of that stuff. Yeah, I wish. And right. I have to imagine how much it would cost yeah i wish those gigantic slabs didn't cost so much it makes sense why but god it, even in all of us here i think have tried turning the that's part of the beauty of turning is once you get inside of a log oh yeah seeing the gorgeous grain that's in there and you think god i could be making something so much better than a pen with this oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> i've been dealing with all these little cutoffs i'm like god these are so pretty i can just imagine what it'd be like to have a great big old slab yeah and uh, make something beautiful out of it you know uh chet chet inspired woodwork says materials are sky high finished items are bottom dollar steve french says i'm an ebay seller not wood i'll second the shipping issue it's insanely expensive to ship anywhere these days or anything and John Schaffner says, woodfinder.com can help you locate local mills. Thank you for that. I'm going to look into that. Woodfinder.com. Somebody write that down so I don't forget that. Woodmiser.com. <laughs> uh, KD Dodson says, has anyone tried to hook up with someone that lays hardwood floors? Uh, most of that's laminate these days, but there, you might get lucky. Yeah. Uh, uh, lumber, uh, lumber liquidator. <laughs> Uh, Bob Lee says he's very lucky getting his wood. He has five or six sawmills around his house. We're all going to move to where Bob Lee lives. Jeff Robinson, some of my local lumber yards, lumber yards have a fifty-dollar minimum for a scroller that's high. Uh, yeah, but I, 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 I'd, <laughs> I'd go to a specialty wood place and I'd probably just hang out all day crying. <laughs> but uh, uh. Jim Brashear said he got scraps from a flooring place once. And TJ's Woodworking Shop Craigslist sometimes has good wood and free. Believe believe me, I'm a Craigslist hunter. Uh, yeah. Inspired, got I think, Go ahead. I was going to say, I think the Craigslist thing, you know, is one of those locally dependent places. But I have heard of people getting some really amazing deals where, like, and, and don't just – like check the free section of Craigslist because some people are just like, Hey, you come and pick it up. Um, yeah. you know, people have trees cut down and for people that want to turn bowls and stuff like that, and they might have a tree cut down and chopped up and you can haul it away, you know, and if you got a small chainsaw, you could yeah. easily make yourself some bowl blanks out of it. Yeah. I already forgot that damn yeah. website John Schaffner talked about, so I got to scroll up and find it. <laughs> Woodfinder.com. Okay, I'm writing that down. You know, go, going back to what Brian was saying about, you know, using pine and, and poplar, it's not that, you know, you're, you're telling them yourself. It's, it's also the, do you want to reach out and try, you know, an expensive piece of, you know, rosewood or something, and you make a mistake, and now you get, a, you know, a $40 piece of firewood. Yeah, designer firewood. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you got a forty dollar piece of pin blanks. <laughs> oh yeah, see, you you wind up starting out trying to make a bowl, and next thing you know, you wind up with a pen. So, well, and I th you know, I think a good thing to keep in mind too is, you know, I mentioned earlier going and doing a five hundred dollar lumber yard, a lumber run. Yeah. That's for commission projects. You know, when sure. I'm when I'm doing stuff as a, a hobbyist, things for me. You know, I can't justify that kind of price. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's one of those balanced things you got to keep in mind. You know, I'm right. always, for my projects, I'm always keeping my eye out for for deals. Yep. And we by deals, I mean free. And so every now and then. The last day, I bought a couple of uh, bowl blanks, you know, six by six, and they fit in my suitcase after I ditched a couple of wool shirts. Um, but 
I got a good deal on Ollie, and I wouldn't have bought them had I gone to Woodcraft and saw them sitting on the shelf because they would have been forty bucks. You know, he gave me two of them for twenty bucks, and they were both. Uh, I think one was rosewood and uh, something hard. I can't remember the name of it. I haven't used it yet. But the very first piece, once I, I tapped that gouge to it, and it went airborne. <laughs> I, you know, it's it's the learning curve because it's a much harder wood too. Every now and then you so, get real lucky and find good pallet wood. I and mean, I don't mean yeah. basic pallet wood, but uh, Steve French was talking about every now and then he's found some good long exotic hardwood flooring. Uh, right. Found three three long pieces in a, in a pallet, so you, you get lucky every now and then. All right, well, I got a whole stack of flooring in my shop that I will use for somewhere somewhere down the line or a box or, or something like that. You know. Yeah, uh, most. No, all my counters were sorry. terrible flooring. I, I was talking about my uh, eBay guy I get from, but uh, I haven't ever tried to get very large pieces. I tend to get ones that you could use for like sign art kind of crap. Uh, so, I mean, that's what that's good for. But uh, Donna Presley, I believe, was saying that he would glue up panels for you if you so choose that. Again, if you're remotely interested, uh, he goes by Deer 56 Hunter on uh, eBay. Well, David Gunn's in the house. Let's give him a chance to talk. Oh, man. Gotta love technology, right? <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on the show. I've been trying to catch up a little bit, and I don't know where all y'all said y'all get your lumber from. Honestly, man, I get I get materials from all over. Pallets. Uh, I buy some construction material I build furniture out of. I just get that at my local Lowe's. Uh, there's a place that sells... Uh, a little bit of hardwood, all it has is basically four quarter stock. It's like an hour from me. I'm kind of in a in a wasteland around here. The only the closest thing I have to a rockler is a rockler affiliate, and it's every bit of two hours from my house. So, uh, pallets, Lowe's, like I said, a little a little lumber place about an hour away, and then online. Um, most of the stuff I buy online is all stuff, caching type stuff. Uh, like cactus and uh, burl caps, things like that for the for the pin bike and duck call caching. I do. And Charles, I, I I know I've been talking for a minute. You want to say something about how I talk? So go ahead, brother. No, I I actually wanted to say something without embarrassing you. Uh, I I got to meet David in a uh, in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, that was and awesome. I, I you, I swear. Was I muted? Oh. No, you're good. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I love you to death, David, but I got to say this. You'll notice his camera angle is always looking slightly up at him. The, that was the biggest shock to me <laughs> when I got to Atlanta. That dude's not near as tall as you think he is. He thought I was as tall. I, I thought he was like Mike Murphy. <laughs> no. I'm only 5'10", man. That, that didn't have to stack me very high. I was good enough 5'10". That was the only shocker to me, but it was dang good to meet you. But I was expecting you to tower over me because the camera's always looking up at you. But okay, back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> that main crush was brought to you by Charles Deering. Aww. <laughs> oh, and I forgot a hat. Yeah. Can, I, can I still be on, Brian? Oh, he's muted. <laughs> I, I guess I guess you're punished. You're the only one without a hat now. <laughs> I'll find something. I'll find make me a Zach Higgins party hat. <laughs> <laughs> I got the cup here. There, there you go. go. <laughs> I need something to tie. Oh, I think I'll style it. You seem so much taller with that on. <laughs> yeah, I'm six five with my hat on. <laughs> Any specific questions about where to find materials? I, I know I heard Mike talk a while ago. I know he was answering some stuff pretty good. So yeah. Was there any questions from in the outside chat or wherever, like where to find a certain thing? Where do you get your supplies for your Alumalite and whatnot? I buy mine direct from Alumalite, and I've been lucky. The, all, all three, I ordered the big, the 16-gallon uh, kit. 
the regular price is 160 bucks. But each time I've ordered it has been when uh, Zach Higgins hadn't had any in a while, uh, and on IEP, pinturners.org, I've caught where there's been discount codes, and I've got that for about 15% off. So I get the 16 gallon kit shipped to me for about 145 bucks. Oh, so wow. That, that'll make about nice. like 10 blanks, though. Do you make your money back out of it? Uh, maybe <laughs> on some of them I have. <laughs> some of them I, I just I cast a bunch of stuff and I turn it and I, you know I turn my duck calls and I made that. There's a bowl like a small. It was going to be like a nine inch bowl and it finished out to about five and a half because I'm not much of a turner. Uh, but I used quite a bit of lumilite in that and I've got some other projects kind of hanging around the shop like this one here. That's got some lumilite in it. So I, I try to just break even on selling the blanks and then I experiment with the rest of it. But I order all mine direct from Lumilite. But I buy the dyes at uh, Harbor, uh, at Hobby Lobby. They have the dyes, the bottles of Lumilite dye at Hobby Lobby. You take a 40% off coupon and get it for about three bucks. And they're $6. Wow. wow. Yeah, I'm going to be doing some pen turning so i need to get a price comparison from you and from zach i want to see who's cheaper mine will be cheaper uh zach's got a bigger selection uh zach's who i learned it from but there's my summer's woodworking hat <laughs> <There you go. laughs> zach's got a bigger selection i'll be a little cheaper than him just because it's it's a business for zach and i just do it like i said to make my money back so i can play around with a little light with it yeah, I just want something that I can buy every so often. I'll hook you up. We'll talk after the show. All right. Yeah, because I don't make a, I don't make any money out of all this. I just give it away, the pins that I make. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, show good. Sorry, Chris. All right. That's all right, go ahead. Talk. Go ahead, Dave. I, I was just going to say that Shogun <laughs> Jimmy turned up three blanks uh, that he got from me the other day. It was on his Instagram page, and they turned out really, really well. I, I like Jimmy did good work on them. Yeah, I had that one pin blank from you, that red one. Yep. There's one like that that, that Shogun Jimmy turned. You need to check his Instagram page. I was but getting ready to turn that, and... I couldn't find my mandrel. And now I can't find the blank. All right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, too, brother. Don't strike out. Yeah, it's got to be around here somewhere. It's either in my room or it's in the shop. Yeah. God. I bet it's already getting warm in the shop, isn't it? I don't think it's in the shop because I, I put all my pin blanks and all my wood for turning next to the lay that's in a box and I went through that box and I found all the other stuff that uh, Jay Ferguson gave me and and the stuff that Jerry gave me and stuff that Steve French has given me and and uh, I couldn't find that one pin blank <laughs> I liked it because it is nice color red and yeah. I, got, I, I bought me some really nice pins that I want to turn and uh, look yeah it's like that yeah and uh went to look for my mandrel couldn't find my mandrel and i know it was on my other lathe when we moved down here i uh, saw so i was i went out to my trailer to go see if it was on there and apparently i already took it off so now i'm like well I had to buy another mandrel. <laughs> How's the weather down there? Really? Turn up. Oh God, it's been like ninety-six degrees. That's crazy, man. It's it's only May. It's <laughs> seventy-five in my shop. Yeah, we're supposed to be getting into the triple digits next week. Man, there ain't no way. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's why I hibernate in my room. <laughs> I'll trade you for a couple of days. We can't seem to get out of the fifties here. <laughs> yeah. I can't see Jerry. Anybody see Jerry? 
Okay. He's, okay. he's muted. Jerry's he's probably working. working. He always works. Yeah. <laughs> I never stops. I was just running around the shop, you know, looking for stuff. Hey, Jerry, can you go out and come back in? Because I can't see you. No. Can't do it. <laughs> uh, the outside chat saying they can see him. Uh, for what that's worth. Well, that's so, nice. Yeah. That's good for them. I don't want to see my beeps. <laughs> All right, I'll, be, I'll be right back. All right. Carlos is looking. I got to set back. I got to set up a little taller. Well, uh, I, I could see him until I put up my uh, my logo. Then he disappeared. Now you you can set up as tall as you want, but this picture can't hide it. <laughs> I, I'm as tall as you. You got your hat on. Well, that's true, but I got a real tall skull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, that, man, that's one of my favorite pictures. Skull. <laughs> yeah, there's there's Jerry. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, one more source for wood. I got one more source for wood. I didn't find this, but a friend of mine did. This is purple heart. It's two inch thick stuff. This was flooring wow. out of a shipping container. Wow. Really? That's crazy. He said that they had they had like five containers worth of this stuff they were just ripping out and burning. Oh, oh. that's nuts, man. That's a, burning it. That's a sand. You know, he's he's like, What are you guys doing with that? And he salvaged a bunch of it because they were just throwing it away. But that's that's a lot of money right there. Yeah, yeah that's and they're just burning it. <laughs> Some people don't know what they got, <laughs> do they? No. Oh, my God. Two inches thick. Could you imagine that's having funny. something like that, Charles? But uh, curly maple? I, I'm more into the uh, stuff that's a little more exotic. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> We're talking about lumber and stuff, Charles. I know, I know. Y'all were referring to purple. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the outside chat. Did I step into something perver perverted here? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to monitor YouTube. No, I, I was just trying. I was trying to lead you down that road, brother. My bad. Right. Well, yeah, I can go down that road by myself. <laughs> no, I uh, I love exotic woods. I mean, uh, if we're being honest here, purple hearts obviously a very hard wood, but yeah, I love. One wood that is considered exotic is Wangi. It's I was talking about it on my show last night. It's a chocolate brown, but it almost has almost completely straight black lines going through it. And it's, it's just a pretty wood. You're playing there. with Wangi again? <laughs> it is really it, it is a really pretty wood, Charles. You're right. Yeah, it's I hot too. Yeah, and zebra wood is kind of a gamble which section of the board you end up with sometimes it can be gorgeous sometimes it looks blotchy as crap uh one thing you don't see a lot of is hackberry that's that's kind of a texas wood it's not exclusive to texas but it's got uh very neat spalting in it it's it's like very blonde wood but when the spalting is going all through it it is it is gorgeous i love spalted wood oh look and at jerry he just I, I, I think i think that zebra i think that one that one long one is zebra wood yeah, oh, wow. I got some zebra wood and wangi. Nice, oh. big old, huge chunk. Wow. Hi, Jerry. I, I was gonna ask you, have you ever seen purple heart sapwood? Um, I've only seen the purple, purple stuff. Sapwood. Check that out. Hmm. All right, that's a chunk of purple heart. Purple, see it's that purple. And on the other side, all the way down, it's got the sapwood. The outside oh, right. cool. I got two. That looks good. And I had no idea what to do with them. But I've never I've never seen purple heart with the sapwood in it. Was that glued together intentionally or no, no, that's that's all solid. That's not glued together. That's that's oh, wow. But can you see on the end there? Yeah. Yeah, that's the sapwood off of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we see the the heart with a, a purple heart. Wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know what to do with it though. <laughs> I uh, I, I'll give you my address on the side. You can <laughs> yeah, <it>. yeah, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> hey, the thing is too, I got this. I got this piece. It's about three foot long, two inches by about eight quarters. I got it for ten bucks. 
Wow. A little, just a little bit shorter piece of the same thing make, for about make nine bucks. What calls out of that? Yeah, that's one thing I'm going to do. I think I'm going to resaw some of it up, try to make some uh, some veneer out of it, make some uh, for like panels of cabinets. I got a couple of cool cabinet ideas. So. Yeah, that's some cool stuff. What was that orange stuff that you did, Jerry? Is that Osage? Paducah. <laughs> yeah, Paducah. There you go. Yeah, yeah Osage, I, Osage orange is actually a little kind of school bus yellow. But it's a gorgeous wood. It's hard as holy heck, but it's gorgeous. And Paducah, when you cut it, it'll be it'll have orange sawdust, but within about a month, Paducah will be really, really dark. It darkens up really, really dark over time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And when you're turning the pins... It destroys your shirt. Oh wow! Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shirt's pretty when it's freshly cut, man. Absolutely. Uh, TJ's woodworking oh, is asking where can you get some. I'm not sure where where what he's asking about. You get some what? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, Chet uh, of Inspired Woodwork said he when he was deployed he 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 uh, stumbled a stumbled upon over 500 more feet of purple hearts like holy monkey uh, I mean, the thing they, to remember though is we call it exotic because we ship it over here when it's in its you know home wherever location it's not exotic anymore yeah. it's a domestic uh, hardwood it's domestic yeah <laughs> Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're 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 saying this red oak sucks, but someone else is going. Man, I would kill for that stuff. Yeah. What TJ was referring to was where can you get purple heart wood? But uh, Steve Branch was also saying it was uh, apparently was very fairly common to use purple heart for container flooring. He has a couple pieces someone gave him years ago that uh, was semi trailer flooring. Huh. Yeah. And. Uh, Brian, you remember the, the, the kid from, was it Australia or New Zealand? Yeah. Reagan? What was his name? Matt Reagan. Reagan, yeah. He would always be throwing out different types of wood names. That we'd all be drooling over getting our hands on. <laughs> yeah, and he's, and he's got stacks of it. So, <laughs> so that, that goes to what Mike was saying. It depends on where you are, what's considered exotic. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had. A guy named David gave me uh, some Brazilian hardwood. Some of the names I can't even pronounce, but man, some were like real heavy, and these are like little squares, you know. Some were really heavy, and then some were really light, and they looked almost the same. It was pretty weird. Yeah, I am a terrible identifier of woods. I mean, unless you're used to using. A lot of different woods I mean there's very few I can identify there's only a handful I can identify by looking I know the it, it to me it, it turned kind of hard uh, that Honduras redwood oh that stuff was pretty pretty strong stuff that Steve French gave me uh, I made that uh, parting tool out of it uh, made the handle out of the hardwood, of course, but uh, man, that stuff was hard to turn. Uh, Chet is saying, I, I assume he's referring to Purple Heart. He said there's a pile of it near Ali Al Salim, Kuwait. <laughs> so if anybody wants to make a trip. <laughs> and that place is lovely this time of year. Let me yeah. <laughs> It's the tourist season there right now. Yeah. yeah. For a very short stay. <laughs> so. But yeah, heck, I want to get some bowl blanks. Well, heck, you've turned in more bowls than I have, Jerry, um, Charles. Uh yeah, but it was mainly from logs I had at my parents. It was mainly walnut and uh, live oak. And by the way, uh, Steve French is saying that the wood you were talking about was Honduran rosewood. Uh-huh. Rosewood, yeah, Honduras. Yeah. But yeah, most of the stuff I was turning as far as bowls was that and what I was buying on eBay. But go ahead, Chris, sorry. Not that it's a bad thing, but we suddenly have two Jerry Browns. 
<laughs> My computer said snap, something happened. So I don't know. <laughs> Thank God they're not both talking smack. <laughs> I could tag Team Charles on my own. Oh, Lord, don't go there because there's the G-rated show. Okay. <laughs> so is Russ having a show tonight? Yeah, yes, he yeah, is. Yes, he is. Okay, and then Dave afterward. He's, uh, he's back in health. Yep. Still hey, a little bit nasally, but he, he's, uh, he's going to have a show. Hey, another source, and I don't know if you, you scroll, saw guys can use it, but another source of one is packing crates. There's a lot of plywood there. So just food for thought. And I, I grabbed a few sheets that are sitting up in my rafters, and it's pretty quality stuff. I'll find it, so. Well, it was funny last night, and I keep talking about my show. I'm not trying to plug it. I'm really not, but we talked about woods. And... Uh, they, some people are saying they got theirs at Michael's, and I made a joke about myself making fun of how I'm always doing gigantic pictures like the one behind me. I said, if I'd stop doing pictures the size of a kitchen table, I might buy, find better sources for wood, you know, like Michael's or whatever, but they don't sell them in eight feet by two feet. But apparently, there's two Brian's, too. I just got booted <laughs> off. Don't have a long it would have been a good day to bring my twin brother along. Anyway, still has to show. Stop broadcast anyway, but uh, yeah, I just got booted off. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, so we got we got Rush show tonight. We also have Dave show following. So, yeah, people that don't know about those shows. Stay on here. You got uh, what's Russ's called now, Charles? Uh, uh, let's shop. Yeah, let's let's talk shop, shop with Russ. Russ. Yeah, and that's with us. Uh, Simply Wooden Creations, and then you got let's talk CNC with Dave. Uh, Dave Gatton. Yeah. <laughs> And if I can do a shameless plug, as if I haven't talked about it enough, mine's Friday. Yeah, but yours is yesterday. You're, yeah, you're glad, <laughs> yeah, but there's other weeks. <laughs> Every Friday Wait, night, 7.30 p.m. Central. Show? Yeah, blab it. Charles, you have a show? <laughs> Hi, Charles. Go ahead, Charles. I have... Go ahead, Charles, Charles. We'll let you plug your show. <laughs> okay, after I say this, you, you can jab me, David, if that's what you're about to do. 7.30 p.m. Central every Friday night until... Until I get sick of messing with it, or we run out of topics. Seven thirty p.m. Central, <laughs> Friday nights. Okay, go ahead, David. Seven thirty p.m. Central on Fridays. I just want to plug your show, but I do have oh. a topic I do. Just uh, holler at me after we go off air. All right. <laughs> anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching the show, and the panel members. I want to thank you guys for joining in for tonight. Thanks for having uh, us. Always a pleasure, once, Brian. Once once I figure out what we're going to do with this show, <laughs> we might start doing life projects again soon. But uh, I got to work things out with me. I want to get out in the shop and do stuff once in a while. But uh, before I ask you guys to do stuff. so I've been neglecting projects myself. Well, it's, it's getting alone. hot during the day out there, so I'm kind of trying to figure out what I can do in the meantime. Might have to bring your into the bedroom. What, Dave? Bring your lathe into the house. Set it up somewhere. <laughs> uh, David Bishop says it's good to see you active again, Brian. Oh, thanks. I got to meet him in Atlanta, him and his wife. That was, that was cool. Well, I would he. <laughs> yeah, I like David. And we're going to be having a birdhouse challenge as soon as I can rum up some uh, sponsors. So, all right, real quickly, Kate. I know you're winding down. Katie Dodson says, "Look up West Penn Hardwood. They ship and uh, Penn is spelled with two N's. West West Penn Hardwoods. 
Okay. Does she have a link or anything? Uh, med, uh, no, but that's why I'll, I'll go ahead and say it again. It's this is three separate words, by the way. I don't know about their website, but West spelled like it sounds P E N N and hardwoods all one word. Uh, I don't know about West and pen are two separate words and hardwoods is all one word, but I don't know about the actual website title. I imagine it's West Penn hardwoods, but I've been wrong before. Thank God for Google. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I want, I want to show you guys my wife. This there she is. is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going? There's Beth. There's hey, Beth. Beth. Hi, you. darling. How you been? It's been difficult, I, but I understand. In there. Missed you. <laughs> Missed y'all too. Such a sweetheart. She's still smiling. Glad you're doing better. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Beth. Yeah, I try to keep smiling. No, don't stop that smiling, ladies and gentlemen. That was Beth Gidney. Yeah, that's my woman. <laughs> that, that's Pink Snoopy if you're getting technical. But. Yeah, yeah Pink, Snoopy. Pink Snoopy woodworking. Yeah. <laughs> Precious woman. Anyway, that's all I got for this week, guys. Uh, next week, if you guys got anything that you want to talk about, leave it in the uh comment section and uh we'll get to it all right steve french is also what? saying hello to beth <laughs> who steve french was saying hello to beth and katie dodson says it is westpinhardwoods.com all okay. one word west pin hardwoods and remember pen has two ends in it yeah like <laughs> pin state my god <laughs> So hopefully better customer service. Oh, look at Russ. He, he just sneaks in at the last minute. I see how he is. I, I do it all the time. I, you know, I, I don't know what it is. He's done it on my show before. <laughs> I have. You know, it's, it's that dang blessed thing called work. Ah. Uh, it, it, I know, I know I'm saying it a lot, Brian, but it, it's so good to see Beth smiling back behind you. That's yeah. That warms my heart. Hi, buddy. I missed our little Bethy Poo. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's all Check I got. On, for uh, Check on David Gunn.